I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a hanging file box. I laid a folder out on a piece of wood and figured out how much space I needed on each side, plus added the thickness of the wood. Then I cut down the front and the back and the two side panels. The width of the side panels is really just dependent on how many folders you want to be able to hang. I set a stop block up on my crosscut sled to make sure that the two side panels were exactly the same. I marked the boards where they overlap, then I dropped the blade on my table saw down to about two thirds of the thickness of the board. Move the fence over to a half an inch, the thickness of the board, and cut slots on the end of the front and the back pieces. Then I raised the blade up to match where that slot was and ran each piece through again. This cut a rabbit that the side panels would fit into. The zero clearance insert on my table saw makes this reasonably safe, but if you don't have one, try doing the same thing with a router instead. There are lots of different ways you could join up the corners for a box like this. I had just never tried this before, so I gave it a shot. Added some glue to all the rabbits, fit the box together, and then used some corner clamps to make sure that everything was held in place at 90 degrees while the glue dried. I removed the clamps and then measured the opening, the top and the bottom on the inside. Theoretically, these should be the same, but just in case they're not, make sure to measure them both. I cut two pieces of plywood to fit in these openings. Added some glue around all the sides and then knocked them in with a mallet. It was nice to see that they fit so closely that I had to use a mallet to get them flush. Once I got the pieces flush, I went ahead and added a couple of clamps on the long sides just to make sure that all the surfaces were evenly touching. I did the same thing for the other side and then waited for all of the glue to dry. After that, I removed the clamps and then had to cut the top off of the box. I cut a strip about one inch in from one edge. I twisted the box around, making a cut on each side until the top came off. I cut a strip of pine down to about a half an inch tall and an eighth of an inch thick. I measured the inside of the top, which is the same as the panels that we cut earlier, and then chopped four pieces of this strip down to fit on the inside. I sprayed some CA glue activator on all of these pieces and then put a thin bead of CA glue around the inside of the top panel. That way, when I put in the strips, they immediately bonded to the CA glue. I didn't have to wait for them to dry. I added a little bit more glue just to hold all the corner pieces together. Then I took a sanding block and a plane and cleaned off the outside of this strip to make sure that it would be able to drop into the box very easily. I had to plane down a little bit. It was a really nice tight fit, but I didn't want it to be hard to get on and off. I also used a chisel to remove each of the corners on these strips, and that just makes it easier to line up the top to drop it into place. After I was happy with the fit, I put on the top and used an orbital sander to clean off any glue squeeze out or any rough edges on the entire box. I finished it up with a sanding block. The last thing to make was a track for the folders to hang on, so I squared up a piece of pine to about a half of an inch square, and then moved the blade down a little bit and the fence over. I just kind of did this by eye and I'm not really even sure what the measurements were, but I cut a slot and then flipped the piece on its side. I lowered the blade again, moved the fence over again, and cut another slot. This left me with a channel and a lip for the folder to hang on. I cut two pieces of this down to fit on the inside side panels of the box, and then used CA glue on the ends and on the face that touched the wall. I used a spacer to make sure that they were both evenly spaced from the top. This keeps them in line and makes sure that the folders hang straight. I wanted to try something different for painting this time, so I used some blue painter's tape to make some diagonals on each face. In this case, I did opposing diagonals and then filled in the space in between. On the corners, I matched up the diagonals for the next panel. I kind of just randomly made a shape that wrapped all the way around the box and connected to itself. I ran my thumbnail along all the edges to press it down, but I've never had good luck with that really stopping the paint. So I used a clear coat of spray and went over all of the edges. This seals it up so the colored paint won't seep through later. I used some brown paper and some more tape to mask off the top section of the box so that I could paint the bottom without any overspray. Once I got that kind of roughly covered up, I took it outside and sprayed the bottom of the box with a dark gray. Make sure to do several light coats and you won't get any drips and you'll get even coverage over time. I used some 3D printed painter's points to set the box on since it wasn't totally dry. I flipped it over, took off the excess tape, and then wrapped that paper around the bottom gray section. It was dry to the touch, so I wasn't worried about the paper sticking to it or anything. Took it back outside and used a bright green to cover the top section. After that was dry, I just pulled off all the paper and all the tape, and I was really happy with how clean the lines were. I took it back outside and added a couple more coats of clear coat. This both protects the paint and brings out the grain in the wood section in the middle. Just in case any paint had gotten into the seam of the lid, I took a sharp blade and went all the way around the box just to separate them. That helped the top come right off. I'm really happy with this paint job. The only thing that would have made it better is to do a coat of primer under these colors first, but I'm pretty happy with how it came out. 
Pretty easy project overall. I think I only use the table saw, so you don't have to have anything fancy. And if you don't like the paint job, you could paint it in a different way, or you could just stain it. It would look like a really nice wooden box if you just use stain instead of paint. Personally, I really like the fact that you have wood grain with a clean line right next to color. And in this case, having the different angles just gives it some more interest. Now we didn't actually need any handles, but if you had handles, you could screw them onto the side, or you could cut a pocket in the side so you could stick your fingers in. You could also do the same on the top, and that would make it really easy to lift the top on and off. This top comes off pretty easily, but if yours sticks, you can add some wax to the outside of this or just sand it down until it's loose enough to come out easily. If you didn't want to add this little lip, you could also just put some hinges on the back so that it would hinge open this way. There's a bunch of different ways to do the top. This thing's basically just a box, but the difference is having a little track on the inside to hang the file folders on. Another cool thing about this is that if you have more files than would fit in this version, all you have to do is extend the side. You make the whole box longer this way and fit as many files as you want. I'm sure somebody out there will say, well, you could just go buy a plastic one at the office store. Yeah, you could, but that's not really what this channel is about. I hope you liked this one, and if you did, let me know. I'd love to hear what you think about it in the comments down below, or my website, iliketomakestuff.com. I've got lots of other videos for you to check out. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and if you want to help support these videos, Patreon is the best way for you to do that. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.